Hello, I'm Dr. Chris Wells. I'm here today with my dear friend and colleague, Tina Harlow. Hello, Tina. Hi, Chris. <laughs> so good to see you again. You too. Always good to see you. I'm so happy that we're doing this. I have to be honest that it feels so good to be talking with you about the theory and getting this energy out into the world ahead of the Congress. Yep, agreed. Well, today we're going to talk about why Dabrowski's theory of positive disintegration is meaningful for us personally. Because we've already shared about the fact that we have the Congress coming in July and we're enthusiastic about it, but we wanted to kind of go back to our own stories and why this work matters to us. And so what do you think? I mean, do you want to go first or do you want me to go first? Sure, I can go first. And I think it's good. I love this, the sharing of stories. I think story is so important. And every single person watching this has their own stories and how they came to the theory or how maybe how they've just come to the theory. So it's kind of nice to start that conversation. So yes, I'm happy to go first. Cool. So goodness, I guess, you know, there's so many facets to Dabrowski's theory. And I think a lot of times they get separated out a bit and there's pieces that have been really important for me besides Dabrowski's philosophy, I guess, ways of seeing things, his, his perspective has been so helpful to me because it's such a beautiful perspective. I think things that are typically like aspects of our character, aspects of our way of being in the world are sometimes looked upon as being weird, strange, freakish. Something's wrong with you. You know, why can't you be normal like everybody else? Whatever the heck normal is. You're too much, you know, all these kinds of things. And I feel like Dabrowski really shifts that. He really kind of takes that whole thinking and turns it upside down because these ways that we're different, these ways that we're weird, there, these experiences that we have internally, like in our in our inner selves, to think of them as actually being helpful and actually being a, a kind of a roadmap that's that's maybe getting us somewhere, I think is really helpful. You know that they're maybe not a roadmap. Maybe it's it's little things upon, along the journey that are helping to give us hints about moving forward. And I love that. I love not looking at something as just for what you see in front of your face, but being able to see far beyond that. Um, so I guess I'm talking mainly about multi-level development and overexcitability and overexcitability alone has been really powerful in my life. I think once I was able to see myself from that perspective, it, oh, I don't know. It was so refreshing. It was just a breath of fresh air because I felt, I feel like before the theory, I was constantly trying to whittle myself to fit into societal norms. I mean, I am the poster child for ADHD. I do have a lot of psychomotor. I have, I'm high on all the overexcitabilities. I am, I, I score high on all of them. And I feel like I have these really intense experiences and I'm an intense person. And I move quickly and I talk quickly. And that's always felt like too much until I found the theory. And I was like, certainly we have to harness these things, but it doesn't mean that something's wrong with me or that I need to view myself in that way. So that's been super helpful. The whole idea of us growing and evolving and utilizing the different hard times that come into our life, utilizing them and harnessing them for, for our own gain is, is a lovely idea, you know? And I think that has helped me in my life as I've gone through different things and am going through things. As you know, I've been, I've been in a pretty big disintegration in the last few years, specifically last year. And I have turned to the theory over and over again, and it has given me light and has given me perspective and has just kept me from going too far into the depths. <laughs> you know, I, I think it's, it's helpful. So anyway, that was a long, my long drawn out answer, but what about you? And I know a uh, lot of your story, but I <laughs> what have been the big things for you? Well, it was interesting to listen to you 
you know, talk about these aspects that were important to you. I mean, just while listening, I, I thought about the fact that there have been so many blessings for me that have come from the theory that it's almost hard to know where to start. You know, I mean, people who are podcast listeners know my story, I think at this point that like I came to the theory from the perspective of already seeing myself as mentally ill, having a, a history that I saw as like my history of mental illness. I mean, that's how I put it. I mean, when we met, that's how I still talked about it. Yeah. And so, you know, reframing that moving away from thinking of myself as broken has been huge but also you know part of discovering the theory has helped me see that i have work to do in the world helping other people get out of being stuck helping other people see that they're not broken and so the theory gave me something to actually work with and bring to people and to share the things that have been meaningful within it for me you know, the dynamisms, these are things that like, you know, things like guilt, shame, dissatisfaction with myself. I saw those as very painful and not positive prior to right. discovering the theory, you know, so, as we do. Right. Yeah. Right. So yeah. that was huge to, to have these reframes and, and to see the, the benefits of having these intense experiences. It's a huge deal. But also, you know, having this, this framework, this theory to work with, you know, and for me, like as a, a researcher and somebody who appreciates it from the lived experience perspective and who, you know, sometimes works with people, it's, it's just been amazing to have, to have the theory. It's like, I don't know that I had a mooring for myself personally and professionally until I had the theory and now every day I feel enthusiastic about bringing it to the world, you know, sharing it with other people, answering questions, hearing people's stories. And just sometimes I feel like part of my work is just to, to witness other people's suffering and what they're going through and, and to validate them and to help them find their own path forward. So it's been incredibly meaningful for me. Yeah. And when you talk about working with others, I have found the theory to be so beneficial in working with families and just on the, just on the small piece of overexcitability and doing the inventory with the different family members and for all of them to understand how each person, how each other is experiencing the world. I found that to be so helpful, you know, like again, not just looking at what's right in front of your face, but what's actually going on inside a person. What are they experiencing? instead of what we're just seeing. Anyway, it's just so helpful on so many levels. Yeah. Totally. Oh, and two, I, I wanted to mention that I too see myself as ADHD. Like that's a label that I was really comfortable with when I came to theory. Then I went through like a whole process for a few years of, of trying to figure out, is it overexcitability? Is it ADHD until I recognized eventually that it doesn't make sense to think of it as an either or situation. And, you know, now I'm less likely to go around talking about myself from an ADHD perspective, but I just have embraced the term neurodivergent and that's what I use. Yeah. But, but I appreciate overexcitabilities as a way to understand these things outside of the medical model with the pathology paradigm and to say, you know, these are aspects of myself that can be transformed that become dynamisms like these are the raw material for my personal growth it's yeah. it's a huge shift mm -hmm. absolutely yeah yeah such a wonderful thing to have at our fingertips and we have the Dabrowski congress coming up where we can all kind of come together and share some of these experiences that we have and maybe what we're talking about you know today with what the theory gives us I almost feel like when we come together, we can give that to each other too, if that makes sense, because we're all kind of coming from this framework. And so when we talk about how comforting it's been and how, what a breath of fresh air it's been and how just all of those experiences that we've had, when we're able to also provide those feelings to other people and that experience to other people, and we all can do that within community, what a beautiful thing. Definitely. 
Yeah. Yes, the mirroring at the Congress is incredible. And that's one of the beautiful things about the theory. I think many people come to it, they read about it or they listen to the podcast or however they are first exposed to it and they see themselves reflected in it maybe for the first time. And it's such an incredible experience to have that happen. I mean, I say as somebody who went through it myself, but at the Congress, what's beautiful is that we will be gathering in person and I, I don't even know how to articulate for people who are watching, like how beautiful the Congress is compared to other conferences that you're with people who get you. So yes, like that mirroring experience experience is really wonderful. And, and I, and it will happen virtually too, but you know, we have a limited amount of space here in Denver. And so if you want to be with us in person, I wouldn't delay too much. You know, we can only have up to a hundred people in the room. So, but it's, it's going to be very special regardless yeah. of how you attend. And it's July 11th through 13th here in Denver right. or also virtually. And there's lots of options of ways to participate and be involved. And we'll put the link in the description so that people will have access to that. Yes. So. Yep. Coming up, we are actively working every day on the Congress <laughs> and making it. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. It's going to be great. It's going to be great. It has been a lot of work, but it's going to be worth it. And already like seeing the list of the sessions and the workshops, it's it's going to be great. Yep. All right. So if you haven't registered, please register and we will we'll just keep making these videos and hopefully you will be joining us in Denver or virtually either way. That's okay. right. Well, thanks so much for joining me again, Tina. Thank you. Bye. Bye.